communication satellites so here we have seen they are placed in geostationary orbit or geosynchronous orbit also this orbit also generally the distance from the surface of the earth is 36000 kilometers so if we see the applications broadcasting services so various types of broadcasting we have seen so igno is broadcasting the we can say live classes are also recorded classes live classes it is giving to the students so those are possible through the broadcasting services that have been provided by the communication uh, satellites good morning students welcome back to pluto science right today is our 31st day 31st day till now we have completed 30 days and uh, today uh, the topic for discussion is satellites and satellite systems so this area also very very important and combined with this the next two days also 32nd and 33rd day uh, tomorrow i'm going to discuss the missile systems and the uh, day after tomorrow i'm going to discuss the uh, launch vehicles right so all these topics combined all these topic when we combine so they are very very important uh, for the examinations you can expect one to two questions from these topics uh, everything satellites uh, satellite systems the missile systems and also the launch vehicle uh, launch vehicles like we have uh, pslv and gslv so the latest version is gslv mark 3 so these kind of uh, we can say launch vehicles we have so all these are very very important from the point of view of examination right today we we, uh, we are studying the satellites and the satellite systems so a brief uh, if we understand briefly so <coughs> satellites can be divided i mean satellites were there from the beginning so we call them as natural sa satellites natural satellites like uh, moon is the best example is uh, moon is the best example so moon uh, surrounds the earth so it is called as the uh, satellite of the earth so it is natural satellites so after uh, after the development of technology now there are artificial artificial satellites right many satellites we have many gsat uh, satellites we have uh, for example gsat so there are satellites named as gsat so there are artificial uh, satellites many satellites we are sending uh, with the help of we can say rockets or launch vehicles and they are also if this is the earth they are surrounding the earth they are revolving around the earth so there are many we can say orbits different type of orbits we are also going to study those orbits so they are orbiting the earth so generally if a body is or orbiting a planet that is called as uh, satellite right so this is the brief introduction about the satellites so from the uh, uh, before itself natural satellites are there so nowadays we are sending artificial satellites for various purposes right we also understand the various purposes that are made possible by the satellites right right so uh, before going to uh, going into the advantages and orbits we will briefly understand the mechanism of satellites how satellites work so before satellites we were using the radio waves radio waves or radio wave spectrum was being used for radio waves sorry not spectrum radio waves were used for communication right but uh, to com to communicate in a large area for example we have to communicate to the people of uh, united states of america so it became uh, we required a large cables large number of we can say cables and other equipment was required so ultimately this proved very costly affair so laying the cables for a proper communication without any disturbances so laying of the cables was required so this uh, proved to be a costly uh, affair so after this a better solution has been found in the form of 
the satellites you can say artificial satellites right <coughs> so when the satellites have arisen the communication satellites have arisen the communication communication also with the uh, we can say advancement in the technology so powerful uh, we can say transmitters have come and also the i mean the receivers and the processing stations also have come receivers have come so i mean the technology has become cheaper also so then the mechanism of satellites proved to be very useful for the purpose of uh, communication right so if we understand the mechanism of uh, we can say satellites so there will be a transmitting or we can say transmitter will be there it is also located at the ground level so transmitter uh, transmitter will be there so these transmitter will send the signals to the satellites which is we can say orbiting the earth so this satellite will be orbiting the earth so there the satellite receives the signals and uh, we can say it processes the signals or we can say it am also amplifies the signals amplifies the signals then it will send uh, those signals whatever it has received again to the earth uh, we can say this uh, is uh, this can be said as the receiver so the receiver again stationed the, at the ground level it will receive the uh, we can say uh, signals whatever that have been sent by the satellites and again you can say here some processing or we can say uh the uh, signals are generally uh, came uh, came in the form of radio signals so that it, it can be we can say transferred or transformed into whatever format we want whether it be data whether it be images so etc so it will be transmit i mean transferred or uh, i mean transformed and we can say here also some kind of amplification takes place right right so this is basically the mechanism in the, uh, involved in the working of the satellites so the connection between the uh, we can say transmitter and the satellite this stage is uh, this process is called as uplink so basically the transmitter is uplink to the satellite so the information transition process when the information is coming from the satellite to the we can say receiver it is uh, known as downlink so when the information is coming from the satellite to the receiver that is known as the downlink so try to remember this vocabulary right so this is the general we can say mechanism of working of a satellite right so because uh, this particular satellite is located in the space and it is orbiting around the around the earth so the transmission becomes now easy though re, there is no need for a we can say uh, uh laying down of laying down of wires etc so communication is generally transmitted through the we can say atmosphere or the space so because of the advancement in the technology the all the processes involved in in, in this along with the we can say the uh, equipment required including the satellites and the launch vehicles so when this pro process become cheaper and affordable so this become this has become the we can say preferable mode for communication right so even the latest adv advancement we can say after the 2000s we can see very powerful antennas have come so basically here the receiver basically it is an anti antenna ground mounted antenna which will receive the signals from the uh, satellite so basically you might have seen this kind of uh, shaped uh, we can say one thing will be placed and it will work as a an antenna and it will receive the signals and again it will we can say modify or trans transform the signals whatever the signals have been received from the satellite so because powerful antennas have come and the technology has also improved so there is at present there is known for not uh, there is no need for a ground mounted transmit or uh, uh, receiving center directly we can use this antennas at our homes right so when this uh, kind of powerful antennas have come we can use 
uh, we can install these antennas directly at our homes and directly whatever the signals coming from the uh, we can say satellite they are directly we can directly utilize them so best example is dth or D, uh, dth or d2h direct to home services we can say now many companies like uh, tata sky is there they are uh, selling this kind of equipment and whatever the entertainment uh, we can say uh, many channels uh, entertainment we can say many channels they have been given by the tata sky so directly we are installing an antenna uh, 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 on the, the top and directly the entertainment services whatever that have been provided by the tata sky we can we are able to see them on the television right so in this way the we can say basically the education services educational services and entertainment services so there is no need for a ground mounted uh, receiving station now so directly the satellites are communicating with the home equipment and we are directly getting the services at our home right so this is the mechanism involved in the satellite working right so another important aspect associated with the satellites is orbits right the orbit generally if this is the earth if we say this is the earth right if this is the earth so generally if this is the earth so different orbits will be there right so we can basically divide the orbits orbit is generally in the whatever the path whatever the path that a satellite is uh, a satellite is revolving revolving around the earth so that is just basically known as the uh, we can say orbit so there are we can classify the orbits into the uh, different we can say uh, four uh, categories we can uh, divide the orbits so basically this classification is based on the distance distance from earth right so this is basically this classification is basically dependent on the earth so it is uh, based on the distance from the earth the distance of the satellite from the earth the first one is low earth orbit so low earth orbit is we can say the distance from the earth surface uh, to the path of or the um, to the orbit of the satellite the distance is a few hundred kilometers few hundred kilometers let's say 300 to 500 kilometers right so this is called as low earth orbit so basically the reasons uh, basically we can say the low earth orbit because the satellite is not placed that much higher so it is not ideal for communication so the we can say applications are, are also very limited even when we use these satellites for communication purposes only very lesser area can be covered through this satellite not a wider area so one of the reason is earlier the launch vehicles launch vehicle uh, they were not thus that much powerful so as you all know to uh, we can say launch a satellite we need a rocket especially gen in general language it is called as rocket rocket so it is also called as launch vehicle all right so the launch vehicles were not that powerful so they could lift the satellite only to a limited height so because of this limitation the orbit was also uh, limited only so because of this reason the communication whatever uh, that has been provided by these satellites is limited it is confined to only a limited area though i mean the low earth orbit very useful for uh, we will discuss those uh, use, uses so it is better i mean very much useful for remote sensing remote sensing and also for we can say cartography also i mean when there is not requirement uh, there is no uh, when there are there is no need for covering the wider area so this low earth orbit satellites become very very useful for example if you want to survey an area uh, in that case this low earth orbit is very very useful if you want to survey 
uh, an area with respect to agriculture the crops grown there or we are sc- scouting for resources like uh, minerals or in ocean when we were when we are finding out what are the regions in the ocean that have uh, more and more fish we can say number of fish are present there so in these types of uh, we can say uh, uses i mean applications the low earth orbit proves very very important right the next one is medium orbit so medium in medium medium orbit so after the development of technology we can say during the uh, say 1980s and 1990s so some more powerful some more powerful powerful we can say launch vehicles how come vehicles have come for example we can say the slv a satellite launch vehicle after that there is a development of pslv also so polar satellite launch vehicle this one so slvs were developed in india right so uh, when little bit more powerful launch vehicles have been developed the medium earth has medium orbit uh, we can say uh, satellites have been made possible so basically if this is the earth if this is the earth so the <coughs> orbit was like a little bit longer so distance was from 100 kilo from uh, we can say hundreds to hundreds of kilometers to few thousand kilometers thousand kilometers right so the because of the powerful launch vehicles this was uh, i mean lifting of the satellites for a uh, little bit more height further heights was made possible so because of this we could achieve the medium level of orbit where the satellite uh, keeps we can say rotating the earth on a medium orbit so basically the we can say the we can say the distance from the earth of the orbit was uh, ranging from 100 uh, some 100 kilometers to few thousand kilometers right so this is about the medium orbit so the i mean we we can say the area covered through the satellites was little bit wider than that of the lower earth orbits right so when the i mean height that has been increased so the services provided by the particular satellites have also increased a little bit uh, more right next one is the geosynchronous uh, we can say geosynchronous orbit right so next orbit is geosynchronous orbit or we can also alternately call it as one type of geosynchronous orbit is geo stationary orbit stationary orbit also right so we can say this is the most most suitable uh, we can say orbit for when it comes to communication purposes communication purposes so later in this uh, we can say communication purposes later in this lecture we will also understand the types of satellites here we are seeing the we can say orbits we also see the types of satellites so uh, we come to know that each of this orbit is suitable for the one type of a particular type of satellites all right so basically the low earth orbits are suitable for we can say remote sensing uh, we also call them the remote sensing satellites as uh, <laughs> earth observation satellites earth observation satellites uh the we also call the geosynchronous uh, satellites all uh, satellites as communication satellites especially the insat satellites insat satellites they are uh, indian satellite system it is widely used for communication purposes so this geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit it is very much useful for the communication so uh, effectively it can communication purposes so effectively it can cover the entire earth so effectively the satellite can cover the and a satellite system can cover the entire uh, entire earth and uh, wherever we want uh, throughout the earth we can send the communication so basically the distance from the satellite from the earth is 36000 kilometers 
थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स अप्रॉक्सिमेटली राइट सो वेन ए पर्टिकुलर सैटेलाइट इज प्लेस्ड इन दर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ सो दट सैटेलाइज सैटेलाइट विल बी इन ए पोजिशन टू कवर दि एंटायर ग्लोब वेन इट कम्स टू दि कम्युनिकेशन पर्पसेस राइट सो ट्राई टू रिमेंबर दिस डिस्टेंस देर आर अदर वी कैन से कंडीशंस दट हाउ टू बी फुलफिल्ड Uh, later uh, immediately after uh, the uh, study of orbits we will see what are the other conditions that have to be fulfilled by a geo stationary or geo synchronous orbit we will understand them right so till now remember that a geo the distance uh, of the orbit from the earth surface for a geo stationary or geo synchronous satellite is 36000 kilometers right next one is special orbit So this special orbit is basically <coughs> the we can say uh, the medium medium range or uh, we can say uh, sun synchronous orbit sun synchronous orbit so what is sun synchronous orbit we will understand later in this lecture basically sun synchronous orbit is when we see when we see from the sun Uh, a particular satellite it looks that uh, which is whatever the satellite that is uh, we can say revolving around the sun so from the sun it looks that the particular satellite is following the same orbit all the time so from the sun it looks that the particular satellite is following the same path all all the time so that satellite when it pay, plays the, that kind of a orbit it is known as sun synchronous orbit so the advantage of this sun synchronous uh, uh, we can say orbits or this special orbit is it covers the same place of the earth twice a day so it covers it covers same place of the earth same place of the earth twice a day twice a day so Uh, these type of satellites are very much useful in uh, we can say uh, material uh, meteorology i mean weather related aspects these type of satellites are very much u- useful in meteor meteorology i mean if you want to we can say find out the weather condition especially uh, we we uh, especially in india we face situation like cyclones or uh, floods or even for that matter the droughts so to forecast these things and to inform people early so these kind of orbit is very very useful right so it is also some special orbits are also useful in remote sensing remote they are useful in remote sensing also right so this is about the we can say special orbits right so the satellites for this purpose for all these purposes they will be placed in a special orbit according to the need right so this is about the orbits of the satellites right so now we will understand a little more about the geo synchronous orbit so alternatively you will also hear the name of geo stationary geo stationary so we can say this is the uh, sub category of the sub uh, category of the geo synchronous orbit right so if we understand about the geo synchronous orbit uh, sub category of it is geo stationary orbit geo stationary orbit right so conditions uh, that have to be fulfilled in geo synchronous orbit are geo stationary orbit are so angle of inclination has to be 0 degrees 0 degrees which means the satellite uh, should be directly on the equator equator so uh, the angle of inclination of the satellite when that is compared with the uh, we can say the earth so the satellite has to be placed directly on the top of the equator so if this is the equator the satellite has to be placed on the equator so it is known as i mean this is one of the conditions next is direction of the satellite has to be same as the earth rotation so if earth is uh, rotating as you all know 
earth rotates from east to west so basically the direction of the satellite also should be in that direction so it should be from <coughs> east to west right that is the second condition next uh, the particular satellite it should complete a revolution in 23.94 hours approximately 24 hours so as you all know earth completes its we can say rotation uh, the duration of the day is approximately 24 hours exactly to be precise it is 23.94 hours uh, so in this time within this time the earth completes its one rotation right so in that time same time the satellite has to complete its revolution it should complete one full circle around the earth in this particular time row so when all these conditions are fulfilled what happens it happens that so uh, if this is the earth the satellite will be in a same position when we see from the earth if this is the satellite so earth is moving like this the satellite also moves in the same i mean with the required speed and the direction so that that satellite looks stationary when we look look uh, when we look from the uh, surface of the earth so when these three conditions are fulfilled it is known as geostationary satellites and why it is called uh, called as geostationary satellite because when we see the particular satellite from the earth surface so always at any time it looks that it is stationary uh, the satellite is stationary from the surface of the earth so that particular star satellite well suited for giving using for communication services communication services right so to be a satellite to be geosynchronous satellite so there is this fundic first condition need not be fulfilled right so the angle there can be an angle of uh, inclination which means it should not be placed it should it need not be placed directly on the uh, we can say on the top of the equator right similarly uh, it has to complete the revolution in 23.94 hours right so direction of the satellite uh, need not be say i mean if this is the earth you can from the image you can understand so this is the geo uh, stationary orbit which is in the blue color this is the uh, we can say geo stationary orbit you can see it is uh, revolving uh, we can say uh, around the earth uh, so basically the earth moves from west to east so the satellite is also moving in that direction and it is uh, moving directly on the top of the equator so if you see the we can say this geo synchronous satellite so there is i mean the direction is not same and also it is no, not moving on the top of the equator right but it is completing its orbit within this uh, we can say the particular time 23.94 hours then it, this uh, we can say the orbit is called as geosynchronous orbit right so you should be uh, we can say uh, which you should be knowing about these differences also the difference between uh, geosynchronous orbit and geostationary orbit because when you study the navic navic so we have a navigational satellite system that also we will understand when you study this so these two orbits become very very important right so this is about the geosynchronous orbit right another orbit just now we have i have discussed when i was discussing about the special orbit right so sun synchronous orbit is there especially the special orbit is they uh, placed in medium medium range sun synchronous orbit so what is meant by sun synchronous orbit when we see from the sun when we see from the sun it looks that a particular satellite that is Uh, following the same path same orbit uh same orbit uh all the time when we see from the sun it uh, seems that a particular satellite is following the same orbit when it is when it is revolving around the sun the advantage also we have seen so a same uh, place same place is covered twice a day two times a day two times a day 
so this is very much useful in uh, remote sensing and also the meteorology when we are uh, predicting the weather conditions right so this is all about the orbits and uh, we can say different types of orbits now we will understand the types of satellites right so basically satellites can be majorly divided into four types that is earth observation satellites these are very important i mean they are much useful in remote sensing remote sensing or we can say uh, we can say cartography even in cartography also uh, these are useful similarly communication satellites these are used for communication especially we have understood education and entertainment they have become very very important they also need for uh, some other purposes communication uh, purposes similarly navigational satellites so you can find out from the name that they are very much used in navigation navigation you know uh, for the movement of vehicles uh, now we are using google maps so it is also one of the application of the uh, navigational satellites so uh, for the vehicles to move for transportation and uh, it is also used even in the civil aviation civil aviation that is movement of uh, aeroplanes flights similarly it can also used for movement or navigation of the ships right uh, similarly astronomical satellites another uh, another uh, we can say type of satellites so these are used for observing the observing the celestial bodies celestial bodies to basically observe the stars other stars and we can say other galaxies so to observe other stars and galaxies these astronomical satellites are useful right so now we will uh, study some in some detail about these four types of satellites right so first is earth observation satellites right you have uh, already understood that basically it is major purpose of this uh, we can say application a uh, major objective of uh, this uh, we can say earth observation satellites is remote sensing remote sensing is scouting for we can say resources to find out the minerals or we can say fish uh, fisheries uh, when we are scouting for fish in the ocean they are useful to survey the crops or even for surveying the we can say forest so for all these purposes the we can say uh the i mean earth observation satellites are useful one of the important advantage of this earth observation satellite is whatever may be the weather conditions weather conditions we can i mean we can uh, survey the earth we can do the remote sensing so these type of we can say transponders transponders or for that matter lenses are used in these satellites right next another uh, we can say another important application major application of is some gis satellites are also there so geographic information system gis means geographic information system right mis you know management information system so similarly gs geometric uh, geographic information system so it is useful i mean there are plenty of application nowadays there are plenty of applications uh, taking up on the uh, we can say gis so if we take the mgnre ga mgnre ga so gis used for geo tagging of the geo tagging of the applications or sorry assets created assets created so for example uh, for example if it is said that uh, under the mg mg narega a particular road has been laid so a road has been laid so what uh, the satellite uh, what how can we use the satellite technology there so by using the satellites we can actually find out find out whether the dimensions that have been mentioned in regards about the road laid down whether that kind of road has been built or not so we can find out the uh, those i mean we can find out whether the type of road is built or not or if it is built we can geo tag that road geo tag that road 
that yes this road has been built and it has been located actually located on the earth so these type of application have applications have been made possible through the geo uh, tag uh, gis satellites right another applications are if you see in some detail cartography so making the images of the earth locating making images of earth and locating important resources important and everything so building the maps so you can say modern day you can understand the importance of the maps maps are very very useful uh, in planning planning a city etc so many many applications are there uh, when we see the images so satellites are very helpful in creating those maps next is oceanography to study the ocean study of ocean and understand various aspects about the ocean uh, we can say whether uh, it uh, its physical characteristics like uh, temperature changes etc and also resources we can scout the resources like uh, mineral modules like fish and uh, if oil and gas is there or not so we can scout in the ocean through the satellites next is resource uh, resource management so first we can map the resources locate and map the resources next we can manage the resources right so through the satellites we can uh, find out so areas where ground groundwater is being over exploited and we can take precautious measures about the exploitation of the groundwater similarly so forest can be recorded and uh, the areas where forest has been depleted or forest had has been damaged we can locate those areas and we can take precautionary measures similarly uh, <coughs> minerals we can also find out the minerals so if you say uh, in some area minerals have been over exploited and there the terrain has been if we say the soil or terrain has been damaged so we can identify those areas also so in this way we can better manage the resources right next is meteorological applications are also there through this uh, we can say the remote sensing we are earth observation satellites so just now i have explained so when we monitor weather and also to predict the conditions like cyclones rainfall floods etc the earth observation satellites are very very useful so through uh, by we can say predicting these uh, uh, cyclone or flood kind of things we can alert the people uh, early so that uh, precious lives of the people can be protected right so these are the uh, applications of earth observation satellites so basically earth observation satellites are they are uh, placed in low earth orbit right they are generally placed in low earth orbit next one is communication satellites so here we have seen they are placed in geostationary orbit or geosynchronous orbit also in this orbit also generally the distance from the surface of the earth is 36000 kilometers so if we see the applications broadcasting services so various types of broadcasting we have seen so igno is broadcasting the we can say live classes are also recorded classes live classes it is giving to the students so those are possible through the broadcasting services that have been provided by the communication uh, satellite so best example is education igno is uh, i mean many for that matter many channels are uh, many channels are there live education channels are there so all these are made possible through the communication satellites next is also high internet high speed internet services those are also being provided next telemedicine so people are consulted uh, consulting the doctors uh, online and the doctors are giving advice about the medicines so in this way telemedicine is uh, being i mean is made possible so the one of the famous beneficiaries apart from india so india indian people are being benefited so india is providing these services to uh, many countries in african continent also so i mean relatively the health services are not that much developed in countries or continents like africa so many countries in africa are utilizing this service of telemedicine so basically the indian satellite system is providing we can say effective and efficient telemedicine 
services next is entertainment so we cannot we need not discuss more about it so all the dts services what are i mean i have given an example direct to home service given by dish tv or tata sky so they are directly uh, providing the we can say number of n number of channels directly to our home without no need for a receiving station separate receiving station so just we need to install an antenna uh, at the uh, in our home and that antenna will capture the signals and we can view number of channels right so this is made possible through the uh, communication satellites similarly they are useful in disaster management so whenever a disaster occurs for example earthquake has occurred earthquake or for that matter cyclone has occurred so whatever the communication ground ground level communication channels are there they will be destroyed for example two cell phones to work we need cell phone towers cell phone towers and they are connected through the wires so basically when a disaster occurs all this will be damaged many cases the cell phone towers and another infrastructure which is placed on the ground it will be get damaged so in that way we cannot communicate with the people who are affected by the disaster so in this way the satellite phones uh in this case the satellite phones they are the only means to communicate so through the satellite phone phones we can convey uh, or we can communicate with the people and we can better manage the disasters so in this way disaster management proper disaster management is also possible next circan search and rescue so through the communication satellites the satellite aided search and rescue uh, operations can be uh, taken away so if a particular we can say helicopter helicopter has gone missing or uh, we can say some uh, we can say some crew members who are uh, traveling in the forest or they were moving in the forest uh, they have lost their we can say way so in those cases uh, by using the satellites satellite communication we can trace their location and we can uh, rescue those teams or those people so these kind of search and rescue operations are also possible uh, for that matter so basically for uh, communication satellites uh, insat series has been used from the uh, i mean uh, from the beginning so these some communication uh, satellite series of satellites are known as the insat system indian satellite system so insat satellites are being used for communication so from 2000 onwards 2000 onwards the gsat gsat satellites have also been introduced for the communication purposes so you have you must have heard the names of like gsat 8 one satellite is there so gsat 1 so like this names are there gsat 2 is also there so this kind of names you must have heard so all these are uh, uh part of the series of the gsat series so basically gsat satellites are also used for communication right so this is about the communication satellites next uh next is navigation satellites right <coughs> the basic major purpose of this satellites is to provide navigational services right navigational services or the geospatial services right right the orbit used here is generally 20000 kilometers to 37000 kilometers so it ranges according to the name so basically the distance uh, from the surface of the earth the distance of the orbit will be 27000 kilometers to uh, sorry 20000 kilometers to 20000 kilometers to 37000 kilometers so basically these work based on the radio signals so there are transponders which are placed in the satellites they are they we can say emit or communicate with the help of radio signals so <coughs> basically they are used for providing geospatial services through which the navigation i have given the example of uh, we can say vehicles movement of vehicles movement of aeroplanes and even the movement of ships and other we can say uh, other transporting vehicles so they make use of these services right now 
uh we can say some countries they have they are trying to develop their own navigational systems so for many i mean uh the earliest we can say the early earliest navigation system that has that is a gps a global a global positioning system so it is developed by usa usa and all other countries were using this system even india is dependent or using this gps only global positioning system so basically it is developed by you uh, developed by usa and it is a it is made portable through a combination of satellites right however due to many reasons including the security security reasons so uh, we can say all the countries or some of the countries they are trying to develop their own navigational system so i mean there are many reasons so they do not want to depend on uh, dependent on the usa similarly there are security reasons also so when war like situation arises so the uh, usa might not uh, provide the communication or navigational service at that time so for this reason also commun- commun- countries are trying to develop their own navigational uh, systems so some of the examples are gps gps is there it is created by usa and uh, we can say it is the largest navigational system similarly uh, navic so india is trying to develop its own navigational system it is known as navic earlier it uh, i mean there is other name also we will see in uh, see in the next time slide we will study about navic so baidu so generally it is i mean uh, we can say developed by being developed by china so china is trying to create its own navigational system that is baidu and similarly galileo the european union it is trying to create the galileo navigational system glonas it is being developed by russia similarly quas it is being developed by japan right so similarly at present we are using uh, a gps uh, system known as gagan so basically it is dependent on the gps only so whatever the services provided by the gps uh, for that matter we can say at present we are dependent on gps system only so but uh, a modified version of gps is gagan so whatever the signals or services provided by the gps the gagan system tries to improve or augment augment and provide services so basically the indian gps system that were present we are using is gagan however we are trying to develop our own navigation system it is known as navic so try to remember these names also all the navigational uh, systems that are being de- developed by various countries so there may be a question uh, in the matching right matching there may be a question about the satellite system when it comes to matching right right so navic <coughs> uh basically of uh, the full form of is navigation through the indian constellation that is the full form of the navic so basically earlier it used to be known as irnss indian regional navigate uh, nav- uh, indian regional navigation satellite system irnss so basically it is a system of system of 3 plus 4 satellite system in total there will be seven satellites in this uh, navigational system so <coughs> so three systems in the in in the total seven satellites three satellites will be placed in the geostationary orbit geostationary orbit and the four satellites will be pa- placed in geosynchronous orbit geosynchronous orbit so we can say till now uh, uh, from the seven satellites uh, until now three satellites have already been launched and they have been placed in the space three satellites have been placed and the four are yet to be launched right so they are yet to be launched so three of the satellites have been already launched and they are uh, there in the space so in the seven satellite system three are placed placed in the geostationary orbit and four are placed in the geosynchronous orbit so what are geostationary what is geostationary orbit and what is geosynchronous orbit we have understood earlier only so if we see the map so all it it will be providing navigational services to the 
all over the in- india and also after the territory of india up to the 15 kilo 1500 kilometers or 1500 kilometers distance apart from the territory of india so these the navigational services will be available right so here we can see three satellites these are placed in the geo synchronous orbit sorry geo stationary orbit they will be revolving directly on the top of the equator and four satellites four satellites they will be placed in the geo synchronous uh, synchronous orbit so when we see these uh, four satellites from the surface of the earth they are they look like they are revolving in the shape of the number 8 from the surface of the earth so basically they will be moving in this kind of number 8 numeral 8 numeral 8 type of orbit from the uh, surface of the earth right so four satellites will be placed in this uh, in this kind of orbit right so if we understand the applications of the we can say navic satellite navic satellite system or the <coughs> indian navigation system traffic management so through the observations we can better manage the tra- uh, traffic so whenever if we see there is a congestion so we can uh, divert the vehicle in a different we can say uh, different uh, through the different routes similarly civil aviation also so for uh, we can say for flights movement at present we are dependent on the gps so uh, when the navic system comes into uh, we can say effect we can use our own uh, we can say navigation system for the civil aviation purposes also similarly it is also useful in circu uh, re- uh, we can say search and rescue operations also the navigation system is useful similarly very very important application guided missile systems so basically we have missile missile systems like agni uh we can say prithvi trishul so all these are missile systems so tomorrow we are going to study about the missile systems so in uh, uh, guiding these missile systems there is every need for having our own navigation system so for military purposes when war like situation uh, comes we are not sure whether uh, usa will provide the navigation services uh, the gps services or not we are not sure so for that matter we should be self reliant so for this particular reason also navic is being developed so when war like situation arises we should be ha- we should have our own navigational system so that the defense missile systems can be launched without any uh, failure or defect right so apart from the civilian use military purpose is also there right so this is all about the navic system right next is astronomical satellites we have uh, seen another kind of satellite system is astro- astronomical satellites so basically these uh, satellites are used to observe the celestial objects like stars and galaxies right so some of the examples are james webb telescope is there so uh, similarly we have india has launched the astrosat sat to we can say basically this is to explore the space explore the space uh, from the observing various bodies uh, from the whatever the signals that are coming from the celestial bodies distant celestial bo- bodies including the stars of the other galaxies we try to understand the uh, uh, space better in a better manner so basically these tali- uh, uh, i mean satellites are they are giant telescopes so basically we use telescopes to observe the uh, we can say objects that are placed in a distant we can say uh, f- uh, far away distance so basically these are these satellites are just like giant scale uh, telescopes they are parked in the space right so they will gather the signals various signals that are coming from the various celestial bodies and they try to study uh, those signals uh, grab those signals and they transmit those signals to the ground stations so those uh, we can say that that information will help in understanding the uh, we can say other solar 
objects like stars and galaxies right so this is some information about the astronomical satellites right now we will see some of the important uh, space missions of india so uh, basically uh, when you cover the current affairs you might be covering all these topics the we can say the latest and important uh, we can say space missions however i will give a brief a brief introduction about uh, three uh, we can say space missions one is chandrayaan 3 uh, chandrayaan so here we have completed 1 2 and 3 also so in 2023 we have completed successfully completed chandrayaan 3 mission similarly uh, the same year 2023 only we have also completed aditya l1 mission to uh, basically it has been we can take an up to study the sun right next gaganyaan so it is our prestigious project we are through the gaganyaan mission we are aiming to send astronauts astronauts into space we can say gaganyaan is indian space mission indian space mission right so we will see briefly about all these three aspects right so chandrayaan 3 uh, as you all know chandrayaan 1 it was successful uh, in finding out or confirming the presence of water presence of water on the moon so this was the outcome of the chandrayaan 1 chandrayaan 2 has also been conducted we can say it is a uh, partial success partial partial success because we could place the orbiter around the moon but we could we could not soft land on the surface of the moon so we could not soft land on the surface of the moon so whatever the we can say lander we were sending so it crash landed crash landed on the surface of the moon so the attempt to soft land on the moon and to uh, place a rover which will move around the surface of the moon and to find out to do some experiments that has been failed and the basically the we can say the lander has been crash landed and it can say we have hard landed on the moon so in the chandrayaan 1 mission also we have hard landed on the moon i mean there has uh, an uh, object that had been made to fall on the surface of the moon so chandrayaan 1 also hard landed and in chandrayaan 2 we have attempt, attempted to soft land but it has been a failure however through the chandrayaan 3 chandrayaan 3 we could soft land we could soft land on the surface of the moon so basically the we can say uh, vikram lander so here you can see the lander which is in yellow and uh, blue colors so, so vikram lander it has successfully soft landed on the surface of the moon so we can say uh, the vikram lander has landed near the south pole south pole of the moon's surface so we can say we are the first country first country Uh, reach the south pole of the moon right we are the first country to uh, we can say reach the south pole of the moon in overall in reaching or uh, in successful in soft landing soft landing on the moon overall we are the fourth country so till now three countries were successful in the past in soft landing on the surface of the uh, surface of the moon those are usa china and russia or we can say former ussr so these three countries are already they have soft landed on the moon so india is the fourth country overall to soft land on the moon so major uh, we can say major uh, objects are uh, involved in soft landing are vikram lander so it will uh, soft landed on the moon so once this vikram lander has soft landed the pragyan rover it came out uh, of the we can say vikram lander <coughs> and it uh we can say it conducted it it conducted some experiments 
experiments right so basically the lifetime of this mission we can say or the pagan rover is 15 days because uh, 15 days there will be sunlight on the sun's uh, sun surface after 15 days uh, there will be darkness or darkness and the temperatures will go into negative uh, the temperatures will go into negative and all this equipment will be uh, destroyed because of the severe uh, cold conditions so because of these reasons the we can say lifetime of uh, we can say uh, the uh, vikram lander and rover has been declared as 15 days however the mission has been successful and we have got important inputs from this particular mission right so here in the image you can see the trajectory and the movement the path of the we can say the chandrayaan 3 mission first it has uh, it uh, we can say it has many uh, we can say it uh, revolved around the uh, around the <coughs> around the earth for many times then it entered into the we can say orbit of the moon and here also it uh, we can say it went into many orbits later it soft landed on the moon right so this is about the some information about the chandrayaan 3 right next one is aditya l1 mission so basically the mission is to study the sun and its coronal ejections coronal ejection right right so basically the aditya l1 mission it is to study the sun so basically the coronal ejection and also the solar flares and also to study the uh, corona corona of the sun so one peculiar situation of the we can say sun is so the temperature the temperature on the outer layer of the sun so basically this is called as corona the i mean the we can say the interior part of the sun the temperature is lesser than the outer part so generally when we see a celestial body when we observe a celestial body the internal temperature will be more than that of the surface tem surface temperature but the i mean curious case of sun is the uh, interior temperature is less than when compared to the surface temperature so to study this aspect also the aditya l1 mission will help and also to understand the solar flares so basically there will be flares coming in uh, some frequencies from the sun and also there will be coronal ejections so the i mean <coughs> there will be i mean the ejections of we can say flames uh from the sun corona so these situations are some i mean whenever this happens whether solar flares or uh, coronal mass ejections so the ground equipment for example the power stations power stations and also even the satellites so they uh, i mean there is a chance that these uh, things get affected so when we find out that these things are happening we can temporarily shut down these things power plants kind of uh, we can say infrastructure we can shut down them so that they are saved from the adverse impact of coronal mass ejection or solar flares so these are the uses of aditya l1 mission right why it is called as l1 mission so basically uh, aditya means an l1 is lagrange one point lagrange one point so basically lagrange points are so there will be overall five lagrange points in any two celestial objects so any two objects are there celestial objects for example sun and the moon or sun and uh, sun and earth or earth and moon or even for that matter sun and earth so there will be five lagrange points where the pull the pull so basically you know there will be gravitational pull gravitational pull among any two celestial bodies so there will be five such uh, points in this space where the gravitational pull from the two celestial bodies will be same or equal so what happens in this case in this case whatever the object that is placed that will be stationary because 
the gravitational pull by the two bodies is equal so one uh, such place is lagrange l1 point that is the point between sun and the moon where the gravitational pull by the sun and the moon is equal so this is the point lagrange l1 point so this particular satellite aditya aditya satellite it is placed in this point it is placed in this point because of this reason it is known as the aditya l1 mission so basically this point is approximately 1.5 million kilometers from the sun sorry from the earth so basically this satellite will travel 1.5 million kilometers uh, away or distance from the earth right so you can say here this is the planned trajectory this is the planned trajectory of the aditya l1 satellites and uh, purpose also we have seen so basically it will be it will travel 1.5 million kilometers from the uh, earth so basically the purpose of the mission is to study and understand the corona of the sun solar flare uh, solar flares and coronal mass ejection of the sun right next mission another important or prestigious mission that is mission that is planned by india is gaganyaan so we can say it is the so we can say it is gaganyaan is india's manned mission to space manned mission to space right so basically the mission involves sending three astronauts to the uh, into the space into the space for 7 days so it is involves sending three astronauts uh, uh, for sending into the space for 7 days basically the orbit will be low earth orbit low earth orbit right so basically they travel in the space for 7 days in the low earth orbit basically there are three modules are there one is crew module so it is it will be the habitat of the astronauts where the astronauts will uh, stay next will be service module so it does the uh, <coughs> on orbit servicing or uh, the i mean on on orbit servit servicing for the astronauts who are present there next there will be orbital module so this orbital module will orbit around the we can say earth in which the uh, three astronaut astronauts will revolve around the earth for 7 days so basically these are the crew present so at present there are actively many we can say tests are being conducted uh, now and then regularly so uh, tests are being conducted so to conduct i mean make the gaganyaan successful there is a there is separate center has been built in bangalore and uh, we can say space like conditions are created in this uh, in this center so the astronauts are also being astronauts are also being trained here so that they will be uh, successful in this india space uh, i mean manned space manned space mission right so i mean some of the tests conducted are like pad abort abort test has been conducted recently many other tests are being conducted so please try to be updated with this information also right so this is the some of the information about the gaganyaan mission right so uh, this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the lecture uh, see you tomorrow until then have a good day bye